Is the Chinese military planning to enter Afghanistan? To answer this question, I must show you some photos. These are from 2016. In 2016, Vion received a set of photographs. They were clicked in the Wakhan corridor of Afghanistan. What you see on the screen is a military vehicle, a Chinese military vehicle. Chinese troops were patrolling here. This was the first time we saw the PLA in action inside Afghanistan, and Vion was the first to document this presence. So what was China doing there? Why did China have to conduct patrols on Afghan territory? Five years back, it did not make a lot of sense. Now it does. And sites like these could soon become frequent. So to answer the question, yes, China looks all set to enter the Afghan battleground. And this is not conjecture. This comes from the horse's mouth. China says it wants to quote unquote, drive out terrorists. It wants to conduct joint operations with Pakistan. And before I tell you about the plan, notice the irony of the situation. Pakistan supports the Taliban. Americans relied on Pakistan to beat the Taliban. They lost and they left. Now China wants to make the very same mistake. It wants to conduct joint operations with a terror state to defeat a terrorist outfit it supports. Perhaps this is why Afghanistan is called the graveyard of empires. It starts with the death of logic here. Anyway, this is the role that China has set for itself. As the Americans leave, the Chinese want to fill the power vacuum. They started with offering developmental projects. Now they're making military plans with Pakistan. On Gravitas tonight, we'll tell you what they're up to. Our story begins on Saturday, this Saturday, July 24th. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi travels to China. He meets China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi. The meeting takes place in Chengdu. On the agenda is Afghanistan. China is worried about the way things are going. Why is China worried? because it shares a border with Afghanistan. The mess could spill into its borders. China doesn't want that. Already, terrorists in Pakistan are attacking the Chinese. Imagine terrorists in Afghanistan also targeting the Chinese. In fact, recently, a Taliban offshoot was behind a bus blast that left nine Chinese citizens dead. Beijing does not want a repeat of this. So what does it do? It partners with a terror state to take on a terror group. China wants to launch what it calls joint actions. Those are the words they use, joint actions. That is code for military operations. And the Chinese military is ready for this. It's in position. Soldiers from the PLA have been deployed close to the borders of Afghanistan. This is what reports say now. Thousands of Chinese troops, listen to this, thousands of Chinese troops are stationed in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Beijing's violation of Indian sovereignty has become a habit. First, Chinese investments in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and now Chinese soldiers in POK. And that's not all. China has also deployed military units on the Tajik-Afghan border. So what is China trying to do here? It is basically securing points of entry into Afghanistan, especially for its troops, if they want to undertake missions in this region. And China has been at it for a while now. Let me show you a report from 2019. It talks about how a military outpost came up in Tajikistan. Since 2016, Chinese troops have been watching a critical choke point from this outpost, an old passage that connects Afghanistan with Tajikistan and China. The military outpost stands right in front of the Wakhan corridor, the same narrow strip of land that we showed, we showed you earlier where Chinese military vehicles were spotted in 2016. Now, what does all of this tell you if you join the dots? China has been waiting in the wings. It has been building its military presence around Afghanistan for a while now, waiting for the right moment to enter, the moment America leaves. And that is happening now. US troops are leaving and Chinese troops are ready. Quick question, what are they ready for? Who is China's target here? Uyghur Muslims. Look at the map closely. On the border with Afghanistan is China's province of Xinjiang, home to Uyghur Muslims and Chinese mass jails. China's crackdown is fueling militancy in and around Xinjiang. China fears that these militants will find refuge in Afghanistan. They'll use Afghanistan as a base to launch attacks. And these fears are not without basis. So Beijing is ready with its soldiers to quash this threat. It has sought Pakistan's help. China wants to leverage Pakistan's ties with the Taliban. It wants commitments to secure Chinese interests. And it's 
making some progress. The Taliban are playing ball. They have promised, reportedly, to not host Uyghur militants in Afghanistan. But then they also promised peace, and look where we are. So how much can you count on terrorists for security? And how many terror groups will you do business with? The lashkar e toiba for one, are moving into Afghanistan. Kabul has sent a message across to New Delhi. The Afghan government has reason to believe that the lashkar e toiba is shifting its base to Afghanistan. And these are not the only ones who are moving. Even the jaish e Mohammed is moving terrorists through Afghanistan. Afghan officials have noticed a trend in the past year. Pakistan has been trying to move international terrorists out of North and South Waziristan. And Afghanistan has become the go-to option for these groups. China is playing a dangerous game here. Look at history from Alexander the Great to the British Empire to the Soviet Union and now the United States. Many countries and powers have tried to tame Afghanistan and failed. Now China wants to do the same. It wants to flex its military muscle and it wants to do business with a terrorist organization in partnership with a terror state. It's a recipe for disaster if there ever was one. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move. Let's talk about China. Yeah. I got this meme, guys. I got this meme. Oh um, it's actually just a news article. Technically the truth. China's state media mocked the U.S. withdrawal in Afghanistan, saying the Taliban takeover was, quote, more smooth than the presidential transition into the U.S. It's, it's true. I just got to say, uh, in terms of roasting and trolling, China, wow, that's an Emmy right there. They, uh, that's a smack in the that's face good. to the U.S. That was a good troll. It's kind of it's kind of sad, though, isn't it? They're right. I mean, American domestically, they're right for domestic news media. It gets worse. In a statement from the Global Times, which is Chinese state media, basically the mouthpiece of the Chinese Communist Party. From what happened in Afghanistan, those in Taiwan should perceive that once a war breaks out in the Straits, the island's defense will collapse in hours and the U.S. military won't come to help. As a result, the DPP will quickly surrender. Yep. China didn't say if war breaks out. They said when. Once. A once, war breaks out. Once. I'm sorry, once a war breaks out. There you go. Once a war breaks out. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you again what I asked earlier. Who in the U.S. has the appetite? Who has in which political party, which force, which machine? So, to, you know, whether Republicans, Democrats, activists, uh, uh, media, which, which uh, um, um, think tanks, which institution in the U.S. has patience for wars to protect other countries? And I mean, especially, especially when there's so many people in the U.S. again, institutions in the U.S. who didn't have even who didn't have the appetite to take on China even on trade, or to take on even Europe on trade. I mean, you have people here who who will tell you that if uh, the EU has a 10% tariffs on products coming in from the U.S. to Europe, we shouldn't have the same. We shouldn't, you know, so, so people aren't even no, willing nobody to... Nobody wants to war. No, no, but it, it's worse. People aren't even willing to put up a fight on tariffs <laughs> to protect jobs and the economy in the U.S. It's right, who, who's right. Gonna, who's going who's to say, yeah, I think we, sh we need to defend Taiwan. Mm. And I think China sees that. It's not just that oh, the U.S., the a government propped up by the U.S. collapsed. I think China is aware of uh, uh, the U.S. Apathy. not having the appetite. Yeah, it's the, the, it's the apathy of the, the American ap yeah. people. War Correct. weariness. Yeah. Th th there's a difference between war in Afghanistan and uh, and Taiwan. We, I, I think Afghanistan's a, a, a huge mistake. We, it was, it was just stupid. Iraq was stupid. A lot of the things the U.S. does in the Middle East are very, very stupid. Taiwan is a, is an ally. And we have allies in uh, Southeast Asia and um, in the Pacific. And it's a huge threat if China starts attacking them and the U.S. would need to defend them. However, I don't think anybody, you're right, has an appetite for war. But I don't think you need to have an appetite for war if you have a president and administration strong enough to just set that boundary that can't be crossed. And I certainly think, as I stated with the Taliban and what we're seeing now, you look at the economic crisis. You look at the – what did Joe Biden just do? He increased uh, – uh, uh, um, Food benefit payments. Yeah. Uh, SNAP. Uh, yeah. Food stamps. Which, which, yeah. which says two things. One, more more money being given out, which is already bad for the escalating inflation. And two, it shows that inflation on food is here to stay. Now they've got to increase it. And, and they're saying it's because they want to make sure people get more nutrients. Okay, well, then you're just giving more free money away. So people are going to be less incentivized to work. You, you, you mean to tell me. I mean, the Taliban certainly noticed the weakness of the Biden administration. But you take a look at what China knows. 
China's engaged in cyber warfare. They got a great intelligence. They are, they are very powerful. And they're looking at this and they know exactly what they can and can't do. And right now, I think this statement they're putting out, they're not joking. They're not saber. It, this is not meant to intimidate uh, or, or make it or, or, you know, tell the U.S. Ha, we're coming. They're, they're saying, no, we're going to do it. And no one's going to stop us because Americans are I mean, too look, look, look at the, the way China cracked down on Hong Kong. And hmm. I don't think anyone, you know, speaks up. Uh, or wants to do anything about it. Uh, the reason for it, I don't know. We, we this, is, this is how it is. Maybe it is because of the U.S. was so, so heavily involved in these two countries over the last two decades at a steep cost to the country in terms of uh, um, soldiers dying or being wounded and you have families suffering and people don't even know to what end, to, to accomplish what. So people just become tired. It's like and a game almost. Yeah, and, you know, and I think, and I think, um, I think there's also a different level of what you know, a different level of patriotism today versus many years ago. Uh, I think this also plays into into a lot of it. I think uh, a generation or two ago, people were more willing to fight for the country. I think today you have it less. What's the reason? I don't know, but I think I think this is a factor. So yeah. if people don't have the appetite to fight for their country, I'm not uh, saying with people, you know, tweeting for their country. People think that's considered fighting, you know, standing up to Trump, tweeting for right. the country. Resist. Uh, you know, then why would they, why would they want to be involved in Taiwan and China? I don't know. That's, that's why. I